Um, and Festitious Fish um, was saying that uh, he has a love-hate relationship with Linux, loves it and thinks it's great, but I'm new to it, so I can't get some Windows apps to run on it perfectly. And I asked uh, which ones in particular, said Adobe CS4. I, I know where you're coming from. You're, you're trying out Linux for the first time. It's, it's an interesting operating system. It's beautiful. It's stable. You don't have to worry about viruses. It's nice and quick. And it basically, out of the box, comes with everything you need. But there's still some Windows programs that are just too handy. They're too helpful. Things like CS4 are probably, you know, it's just like you've been using that to do graphic design or web design, and it's critical to either your business or, or what you enjoy to do. But it doesn't work on Linux, because Linux and Windows are two different operating systems. What I would recommend you check out, just because I don't want you to ever lose hope in Linux, because you're, you're on the right path to trying it out and getting... getting Can uh, I add one thing? It. Yeah, go ahead. says, tried it through Wine and some other virtual thing. Right. Uh, Wine is, a, is an application interface. It's a layer to Ubuntu or to Linux that allows you to run some Windows applications. It's not flawless, and it's designed to allow you to run them natively so that you can run Windows programs directly in Linux. But with a program like CS4 that's extremely intensive when it comes to resources and the way that it works with the system and the way that it relies on uh, Microsoft's product, it's really, it's really difficult for open source program developers to create uh, an interface that will allow you to run that natively. So what they've done instead for applications that you can't necessarily run natively, that you can't just click on you know, your applications menu and launch Adobe Photoshop CS4, what you can do instead is install an application such as VirtualBox, for example, if you don't ever want to leave Linux. You can install VirtualBox, which is going to let you uh, run Windows, let's say Windows XP, for example. You could actually install Windows XP into Ubuntu. So you'd load it just like another program. And then once you load, once XP is loaded, you can launch your application like CS4, and it works perfectly because it is in XP. And the application doesn't know any better. So, and this is the same thing that we do with QuickBooks, right? Same sort mm -hmm. of thing. We couldn't get yeah. QuickBooks to work. We just didn't want to mess with it, so I just created a virtual machine on VirtualBox and installed QuickBooks into that. It was Windows XP. Now, it's virtual. It's a virtual machine, but you still then have to protect that virtual machine against viruses, get your virus scanner installed, things like that. That's pretty important because it is, in all aspects, it is a Windows computer inside your computer, essentially, is the way to look at it. Um, so that's something you want to check out. Now, that's not for gaming. That's And, and it is progressively getting closer and closer to gaming. But it, it, what that's for is, is applications like your CS4, like your QuickBooks and things like that, being able to run them. Then we can take it one step further, uh, facetious fish, because once you get to that point, once you get the point that, okay, now I can, I can load Windows XP inside of Ubuntu or inside of any version of Linux, and now I can boot in, or now I can bring up Photoshop, or I can bring up uh, InDesign, or whatever I want to do. The next step, is to, uh, to be able to actually integrate that into the desktop. You can actually set a setting in uh, VirtualBox that will allow it to look like now that application is a part of your Linux experience. So it loses then the Windows desktop and puts it on top of your, uh, your standard uh, Linux uh, user interface. So, but we'll get to, get to that as you're ready for it. But that's, that's a feature of VirtualBox as well. So you'll find VirtualBox uh, just so that you know where to find it. On your Ubuntu system, it's under System, Administration, Synaptic Package Manager. And this is going to get you what's called the Open Source Edition, OSE. The limitation of that is it doesn't have, and this is putting it you know, very simply, doesn't have SATA controller virtualization. So you're going to be using a, a virtual IDE bus. If you don't know what that means, probably doesn't matter to you. Um, and it also does not support USB 2.0 natively. So if you want to have USB 2.0 direct support, that means being able to plug in a USB 2.0 device and having that virtual machine actually detect it as if it was plugged into a real computer, then you would need to get the non-open source edition. 
that can be got from uh, from VirtualBox's website from Sun. I'll put the link in the show notes, but just for the record, I think it's .org, but I just want to make sure. Yes, virtualbox.org is where you can get the non-open source edition. But here we want to just keep it simple. We're just going to go into Synaptic Package Manager. Let's see, I've got a couple of windows up in here. There we go. And simply from Synaptic Package Manager, just like I searched for before, this time I'm going to go VirtualBox. And you'll see that we've got VirtualBox dash open source edition. I can check that mark for installation. This is how beautiful it is with Linux to be able to install stuff and go apply. And that's going to install everything that you need to start using virtualization on your computer. 